Gauss's law for gravitation is this, where m is the enclosed mass and g is the universal gravitational constant derived Newton's laws for gravitation from this. What is the significance of the negative sign? All right, so I'll start with the negative sign. That just means that they're, they're attracting each other, that they're toward each other. Um, so I think 90% of this problem is going to be understanding what the symbols mean. So 4 pi, g, gravitational constant. This is gravitational flux. So you're used to like magnetic flux or electric field flux. And it's just the gravitational fields going through an area. But what we're going to really focus on is this second half of the equation over here, where this is a closed integral over an area. This is a dot product. And this g right here is actually means the gravitational field. So um, electromagnetic second semester physics is actually not that bad if you do a crazy good job learning physics one because it's all very similar but almost no one does so when people learn Newtonian physics they basically learn uh, a lot of super it's superficially enough and to get the right answers and just move on with class totally reasonable um, but there's a lot of analogies that get missed between physics one and physics two so this is one of them so you're probably used to force equals QE, where electric force is a charge times electric field, where you have some sort of charge, and it just shoots off electric fields radially outwards. Well, you can say the same thing about uh, gravity. So I'm going to say force due to gravity is going to equal some mass, so we're going to replace charge with some mass, times g. And this g is going to be a gravitational field. And so we have some sort of, I guess I should, instead of using a plus, I should use the m for mass. And it's going to create a gravitational field going outwards. That's supposed to be a g. Up here, it's supposed to be an e, electric field. So the idea here, then, is this is the dot product of gravitational field and an area, a Gaussian uh, surface, which can be enclosed. So the picture here that we would use would be mass and then some sort of sphere. We're going to call it use, use a sphere for the Gaussian surface. And so the gravitational fields coming out of our mass going this way are going to go like that. The dA, the surface uh, I guess the surface vector is going to be perpendicular to the surface. I know I'm supposed to draw a little bit more perspective there. So it's going to be perpendicular to the surface, normal to the surface. It's going to point out this way. So this will be dA going out that way. And so we can see that since gravity is going to go, the gravitational field is going to go radially outward. So since we have a sphere, so is the area vector going to be going radially outward. Therefore, these two are parallel. A dot product is a measure of how parallel two vectors are. And since they are perfectly parallel, that's going to be the same as cosine of zero degrees, which is one. So I can rewrite this at this point as one over four pi g, g's gravitational constant, g dA. So I got rid of the dot product and I got rid of the vectors because basically because the two are parallel. And a dot product is always going to give you a um, uh, scalar afterwards. So one thing to note that we probably assume is that uh, the gravitational field is going to depend on radius. Further away you are from a mass, the stronger gravitational field is going to be. So for a given radius, and this Gaussian sphere, Gaussian shape, which is a sphere, has a constant radius. Therefore, since it has a constant radius, it's going to have a constant gravitational field at the surface. So we can pull this constant outside of our integral. Small g, which is the gravitational field. I know it looks like a 9, maybe, if I'm lucky. Integral dA. And I probably should do a little symbol there just to show that it's a closed surface. So now this is going to be the surface area 
of our sphere. So it's going to be G, gravitational field, not to be confused, 9.8. Though similar? That's good. We'll, we'll, we'll focus on that later. 4 pi G times area of a um, sphere, which I'm going to say R radius squared, 4 pi R squared, that's the surface area of a sphere, and that's going to equal mass enclosed. Rearranging this, we are going to get G, which from up here, I, we said that the force due to gravity is going to be mass times the gravitational field. So we can also call this force gravity over mass. I'm going to call this uh, mass 1 equals, let's see, G equals, these cancel, mass enclosed, which I'm just going to call mass 2, divided by R squared. So I know I did a lot of algebra there in the most confusing way possible. So I took the R squared, moved it down there, G, moved it up there, oh, big G, and that this G becomes F over M. I know, that probably did not help. I am sorry. All right, rearranging this one more time, we get force due to gravity equals gravitational constant, mass 1, mass 2, over R squared. And so what this is saying is this concept we had here of this um, Gauss's law for gravitation. That is the same thing as force equals gravitational constant, mass 1 times mass 2 over R squared. It's just written in a different way. And the reason this is useful at least for this class right here, is because this becomes a direct analogy for um, what you're going to do with uh, charges. And as we said before, shouldn't forget the negative sign. The negative sign implies that the force is always attractive, where with charged particles you can get uh, attraction or repulsion depending on the size. So hope that helped. That's how I approach this problem. See you next time.